In this seventh masterclass focused on Zizek's philosophy, we're going to be covering the Quartet of German Idealism. However, before we get into the content, I want to let you know about a masterclass focused on the Freudian unconscious, which starts June 3rd. You can either focus on your professional or personal development and integrate the meaning of the unconscious for the 21st century. This is going to be an excellent chance to engage with me directly and to really build a quality understanding of what it means to be a divided subject. Please join me if you're interested. The link is in the description. Now starting with the Quartet of German Idealism. Zizek focuses and builds his entire philosophical program on what happens in between the emergence of Immanuel Kant and George Hegel. This moves temporally from Kant to Fichte to Schelling to Hegel. Zizek refers to this emergence of these four figures as a unbearable density of thought. In some ways, Zizek would even go as far as saying as that philosophy proper only emerges with this four thinkers, and retroactively they change what we think of as philosophy. What these four thinkers are ultimately trying to do is work through the consequences of Newtonian science for human beings, human thought, and human history. Ultimately, this brings us to an interpretation, a philosophical interpretation, of the rupture and the birth of modernity itself. This brings our attention to each of the four thinkers' main theoretical interventions. First, we have Immanuel Kant, who brings our attention to a priori categories. A priori categories are important to understand because when we think from this perspective, we're no longer thinking about, for example, space-time as an external outside, the Newtonian absolute space-time. Instead, we're thinking about space-time as categories of the understanding. These are thus internal concepts, internal concepts that humans use to organize their reality and make sense of the world. This massively shifts our ability to make scientific interpretations. Second, Fichte focuses on political rupture, specifically the rupture of the French and the American revolutions. What Fichte was interested was a form of radical freedom that emerges, not as a romantic gesture, but as something that involves terror, as something that involves um, a total break with a previous normative order. What does this radical rupture mean or signify for the future po potential of political action? Third, Schelling focuses on the power of art. Art before the modern period was often used by political, monarchical structures or other forms of power to solidify their order, to solidify their being. However, in modernity, the power of art is unleashed in a new way. The power of art is radically reduced down to the level of the individual itself. For Schelling's philosophy, art brings us much closer and much into, even into direct contact with the absolute itself in its becoming. Fourth, Hegel. Hegel tries to, in some sense, summarize the progress that was made from Kant through Fichte and to Schelling to focus on the relationship, the motion between law and love. For Hegel, ultimately his object is how do we understand the power of love and the phenomenon of love in the historical process as a whole. From this summary of these four thinkers, this unbearable density of thought, Zizek tries to engage philosophically with what these four thinkers represent for the 21st century for today. According to Zizek, for Kant, we have to shift our focus not from what is given being or the universal structure of being, but instead shift our attention to possible beings, possible conceptual a priori structures, which could change the way in which being itself is constituted.
For Fichte, he brings our attention to engaged subjectivity. Again, this forces us to shift not from given being a given political order or a given political reality, but what it means for different forms of engaged subjectivity to change fundamentally that normative order, to change fundamentally that reality. Third, Schelling brings our attention to the pre-logical heart. When we think about the power of art, it is not necessarily logical or scientific. It is oftentimes imagistic and intuitive. And Schelling's assertion that this brings us closer to the absolute brings our attention to a type of pre-logical rupture, a type of identification, a uh, pre-psychoanalytic identification of the unconscious. Fourth, Hegel brings our attention to the one as a cut and as temporality. Instead of thinking about the one as a absolute fixed static idea, or instead of thinking about the one as a unity which closes a becoming, Hegel thinks about the motion of love. Hegel thinks about love as a cut and the one as internally cut. Thus, Hegel is not thinking about a fall from a perfect one and a return to a perfect one, but the way in which a perfect one intersects or uh, traverses our temporal reality. This allows us to think, ultimately, these four figures, a historical absolute. Instead of an absolute, which is, in some sense, eternal and non-historical, this is possible because, for one, Kant brings to our attention the existence of a priori frames of reference, the conceptual frame itself. This allows us to shift from thinking within the position of just one conceptual frame or one conceptual schema, like a god or like a Newtonian absolute space-time. Fichte's focus on politics, engaged subject subjectivity, and the ruptures of politics forces us to think trans-subjective reality and its desire for freedom. What is the, the consequences of this trans-subjective desire for freedom? Schelling asks us to then think the drive and the motion which is not logical. Schelling asks us to think the motion which precedes any logical or rational formation. Finally, Hegel asks us to think the way in which this pre-logical or pre-rational uh, space of a drive or emotion becomes articulated in an unconscious narrative, the becoming of the narrative itself. The becoming of this narrative, owning fully your speech in history, is the becoming of the absolute and the dialectic between law and love. That is the responsibility. That is the importance of understanding the power of your own speech and the power of owning your own words. In some sense, when you own your own words and own your own speech fully, you are participating in the historical absolute. And that is ultimately Hegel's message. So to remind you again, I will be starting a masterclass on the Freudian unconscious starting June 3rd, there are 20 spots left, and I hope that you join me because it's a great opportunity to integrate your understanding of the unconscious for whatever it is you're working through in either your professional or your personal life. If you have questions about the course and what we'll be covering, there's also, I remind you, a link in the description, or you can contact me directly, and I'll respond probably within the day. And that's the end of this masterclass focused on the quartet of German idealism, which Zizek uses to build his philosophical program.